All right, I think we are live. I think we might be live. Um, I'm just gonna wait a little bit. All right, um, I hope uh, this time we'll have a little bit better um, quality of the stream. I also hope my computer will be running a bit better. Uh, turn on the AC in my, in my little room. And um, yeah, I also turned on low latency which is a setting on YouTube. Uh, I hope the quality doesn't degrade too much through that. But um, I think that's I think that's where we're at. And yeah, uh, can anyone put something in chat just to just so I know I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> Six oh one CPU seems okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I can see the latency on my phone. Instead of being like almost a minute, it looks to be about 10 seconds or something. Can you guys hear me? Hmm. Who's watching? Is anyone watching? Maybe I'm just talking to myself because no one's watching. <laughs> that would be okay too. This is how I usually work. Um, Alright. Just gonna wait a, like a minute or something. What does this do? Still learning the ins and outs. All right, cool. Now I also see uh, your comments. Something, something. Hi, everyone. Hello from the other side. I can hear you. Awesome. I cannot hear you, Pedro. But I hear you enough at work, so uh, <laughs> I think we're good. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to... I say welcome back. I like this is a regular thing, but maybe this will be a regular thing. Welcome back to a little hacking session. Um... Last time we worked on adding laziness to semi group K, um, and that PR has actually made it into the cat's master branch, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, and uh, Filippo, Filippo Mariotti, otherwise known as Barambani or something, um, he was nice enough to add this to all of the other collections um, and I think the only thing left now is basically adding this to a bunch of the data types that could use some of this laziness um, and chief among them is something like Kleisley. All right um, yeah for those that don't have any clue about what I'm just talking about um, last time Let's just look at semi group K. So, semi group K um, is a type class that uh, abstracts over this little higher kind of type F. And the main method here is combine K, which takes two F's of A and combines them into a single one. Um, as, as we can see here from the example, that means for lists just appending them. Um, and for something like option, it means basically or else, right? So option A or else option B. Uh, but the problem with this is that option or else is a, uh, is a lazy operation. That means it takes the second parameter uh, by name, right? So it doesn't evaluate the or else uh, option unless the first one is actually none, right? Because otherwise it wouldn't need to. Um, and what we did last time is we added this little combine k eval function, which basically takes the second parameter inside of an eval. Um, and that 
allows us to um, to choose if we want to evaluate that second um, that second parameter, right? And this basically is inspired by apply, which has this map to eval function, which basically the same idea. Uh, you have map to, right, which is takes an f of a and an f of b and a function from a to b to from a and b to z. Um, and there might also be cases where we want to short circuit and not evaluate the second parameter, so we take this inside of an eval parameter. Um, all right, so what I did before coming on stream here was just implement this. Uh, map to eval uh, function in the Kleisley apply um, type class instance, right? And so basically, what we do here is that if the underlying f, right? So Kleisley is parameterized by some kind of type constructor f um, has a lazy map to eval, then this Kleisley will also be lazily in its second parameter, um, which is pretty interesting, I think. Um, all right, so uh, we should probably write a test for this, but before we do that, I want to do the same thing for semi group K. Uh, oh, we have an endo, right? Oh, those are, yeah. So, Kleisley semi group K. Here we go. Um, so, basically, we want to override combine K eval and make this thing lazy. Oh, and I already see a problem here. Um, it's that it reuses this A and shadows this one. So, that's going to be a problem. We'll have to rename this into B. Let's just say B. B. Um, yeah, and there's no space after this comma, but Scala format will fix that for us. So I'm just not going to bother forming, formatting that by hand. Um, right, and so basically what we want to do here is we want to say, uh, we want to run, we probably want to run this first Kleisley, right? And uh, for those that don't know, a Kleisley is just a function from an A to an F of B. Um, so we want to run that first thing, and then um, basically that gives us an f of b, right? And if we have that f of b, we can then call combine k on the semigroup k on f, um, combine k eval, and that will determine if we need to evaluate this y parameter right here. All right, so, um, what actually I think we need to do here is go over Y, right? So this gives us a Kleisley, which I'm going to call YY. It's a horrible name, but these things are so abstract, can't really give them good names. Um, and this Kleisley is going to represent this. So we're going to go from A to an F of A. I'm just going to do something like this. Um, and now what we can do with this A is run X. And that gives us an F of B right here, an F of B. Um, and then we can use our semi-group K instance to do combine k eval with this thing. Um, and then basically what we want to do here is say, oh, you know, um, maybe I don't actually need to run this second Clasley, which is this one, right? So we are already, already evaluated this thing, but we haven't evaluated the actual function from A to B. We haven't actually run it yet. Uh, so what we can say here is we can use the later um, eval construct and 
do something like um, yy.run a. And now this whole thing, if I'm not mistaken, should give us an eval of f of b, right? So these both return, this returns an f of b, and this also returns an f of b. And then this whole thing, because it's combined k eval, returns an eval of f of b, gives us an eval of f of b. Um, but this Kleisley right here basically means that we need to return f of b and not an eval of f of b. So what we need to do here is call dot value. Um, close the parent, close the other parent. Yeah, and I think that should be should be working. Let me check the comments real quick. Um, I'm not sure. Are these live? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, and of course, if there are any questions whatsoever, if I'm going to fast, if something I'm saying doesn't make sense or is wrong, please tell me uh, or please ask me questions. Um, the whole thing or the whole fun part of that live streaming is me interacting with you, even though I can't see you, I can only see your little avatars on YouTube. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear from you and answer questions or, um, you know, tell me other cool th things you would want me to work on. Because I think once this is done, we'll still have time to take on some other work. I have some ideas on what I might work on, but maybe you have better ideas. Um, all right. So let's just check if this compiles real quick. Um, all right. It does not because found f of b required eval. Oh, yeah. It should be over here, right? Because we want to run not this later later dot value that would be pretty uh, useless but we want to uh, call it on this combined keval result <sighs> yeah so compilation is still a bit slow Unfortunate, but I feel like it's faster than last time. But maybe that's just me. In the meantime, we can we could check out. Um, what could we check out? We could check out if we can do the same thing for maybe like writer t. Does that even make sense though? I feel like writer t isn't okay. That compiles fine, which is a good sign. Um. Oh yeah, for like writer t, we see here that it does have some optimization for map to eval, um, where it basically runs right. So it runs both of them. Oh, but that's so much cleverer than what I did. Does it? Oh, it doesn't work though. It doesn't work for Kleisley. Thing. Uh, oh wow, what the hell happened here? Yeah, my computer is slow again, damn. SBT is really giving me a workout, well, my computer workout. So we can't do the same thing here, because otherwise, or could we? How do we get to this A though? Could I just say, what happens if I do that? Then I didn't wouldn't need that. I think that might be. Does that make sense? Let's see. Uh, so, sorry. So yeah, I feel like this is much, much better because we're not mapping, we're not even evaluating this class, even though this should always, this shouldn't really do anything. 
Um, but it's still nicer because we're not constructing an extra eval allocation inside. Yeah, let's see. That should compile. In my opinion, this should compile. But it does not. Oh, of course, yeah. This isn't a thing. Um, yeah, let's try again. Ooh, interesting. Uh, missing parameter type. Uh, oh, and of course, this whole thing isn't an eval then. Um, that's interesting. I guess we can just do eval that now. Is that wrong? Hmm. Yeah. Thinking about these evaluation structures sometimes. But then we're still. I wonder if this is better than before. Might be equivalent. It might be better because later is somewhat. I don't want to call it expensive, but it has to do an allocation um, and kind of like memoize it. Uh, but let's see. Where do we have the. Not too well. I feel like. Yeah, that's just a nicer implementation, though. So, feed up map underscore run. Get rid of this later thing. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if these parents are correct here. Looks fine to me. That goes here. Yeah, that looks good. All right. So, I guess that was wisely. Now, if you look at write a T, it does the same thing here. Um, Yeah, so let's just do the same thing for combine K. Uh, let's see. Semi group K. There we go. All right, so what we want to do here is we want to just straight up call F0 dot combine k eval. Um, is x dot run just gives us an f of l tuple a or tuple la whatever you want to call it. I'm also going to run uh, we're going to map this to run which gives us an eval of this should give us an eval of, oh, there we go, expression type, yeah. Eval of f of L and A. Um, and then this whole expression should basically give us a uh, an eval of f, let's see, you can say, um, an eval of f of L of A. I don't know why sometimes it shows up with, like, the expression type. Because that's kind of what we want here. But yeah, I, I think, yeah, this is the same type for this as it is for this, right? Um, the same way this is the same type as that. Yeah. Okay, so um, now that we have that, basically, all we need to do is say, hey, let's put this back into write to Hi, Android Kosong. Is that your name? Sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, well, Android doesn't seem like a name, but maybe it is. I don't know. Um, but hi, thanks for thanks for stopping by. All right, 
Um, so this should give Radu T um, a lazy combined K. I wonder for what else we could do it. I feel like we sh could do it for something like either T. Right? What kind of... I'm not sure what the semi-group K instance is for either T. Oh, okay. So the semi-group K instance for either T does not use a semi-group K on this F. I guess it probably just uses or else on the either semantics. Yeah. So if we added a combined K eval here, it wouldn't do a lot. But it would do the same thing that we implemented last week. Or last week, it was Saturday. Um, which I feel like is still something we probably should do. Let's see, maybe maybe I'm wrong about this, but let's, let's just check it out. Um, see how this works, see if this works. So, I mean, what we could do here is just check if we override map to eval somewhere but we don't so maybe this is not possible or maybe no one has tried it yet we'll see um, it's like a lot of this like this cats library you would think doesn't change at all because all of these abstractions have existed for so long but there's like all of these little things that like you know there's tons of issues and prs on cats that i wish i had time to get to all of them um, but yeah, it's just like a lot of things going on and these little things are often what, what can make like usability of a library nice or not nice or like the consistency where you always expect something like map to eval to be overridden so that things are always lazy when you want them to be. But yeah, um... I think maintaining cats would probably be a full-time job. Uh, but, yeah. It's not mine, for sure. Um, but, yeah, if any of you would like to um, help maintaining cats or help uh, contributing to cats, I would love to talk to you and um, get you set up. Maybe you learn something from this, maybe not. Um, but yeah, let's look at this combined KUL. So, um, oh, I'm kind of blanking. So, but basically, what we need to do oh, this is interesting is that if we ch we can kind of see that if X is, um, right here then we never evaluate uh this y parameter right this is how combined k works um but of course in the normal combined k this is always evaluated because it's not passed by name um in this case what can we do I, i'm thinking because we can't really see if it's left or right without flap mapping. But yeah, let's just have a look. See if this makes sense. Um, so we can do an f dot flap map. We'll take x dot value, which gives us an f of either la. Um, and we can I guess kind of do the same thing that we're doing here. Just pattern match. Just change what's going on. So in this case we'd have to evaluate evaluate this um, in this case I wonder if this is just like this is just all we kind of need dot value dot value because we have to evaluate this eval um, and we also need to basically unwrap this either T of FLA back into an F of LNA um, I mean, kind of looks like, uh, kind of looks like this is, this is sufficiently lazy, right? 
Um, but also this won't compile because this just returns in either T. Um, so I guess we just wrap the whole thing in now. I wonder, who, does this actually do any good? Because the either T is just an F, a description. I think, yeah, I think this is, even though it doesn't provide any, like, if you think of F as like IO, IO is always going to be lazy. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think this is probably valuable even if I don't, even if it's not like immediately valuable. Just gonna, just gonna keep it. Like it doesn't hurt. Um, let's see if this compiles though. Yeah, and we might probably want to add this to option T as well. Oh, it doesn't want compile. No type parameters found. So that can be applied to argument F. Oh God. Um, so something here is off, where R is a right. Do I need to do like a, what do I need to do here? So let right, right cast. No. So this Y, why is this, I mean, this is an, Maybe I just need to say exactly. This is an F of right. I need to do something like this. Either L A. Maybe. Ooh, what the hell happened there? Hello, Busty. I remember you from... You were one of the Outwatch guys, right? Definitely. Uh, F of either A. Oh, yeah, and then we need to wrap this whole thing in either T. Hmm. drink. <laughs> opening for the water bottle is too big. All right, let's compile this. Yeah, I don't think this is really valuable, but maybe someone finds it valuable, so might as well. well let's just do option T and then start writing the tests. Um, so maybe Oh, is this or else? This is lazy, right? That's interesting. Yeah. So we basically... Let's do the same thing here again. Alright, so we won't... Yeah, so we're just going to... Pattern match on... Uh, no, we're going to flat map. F the flat map. X. Case some. You cannot take any credit for Outwatch. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I saw you on some of the PRs, but maybe that's not true. Maybe I'm just, my mind is making that up. Uh, I don't know. I feel like we all deserve credit just for, like, you, at the very least, you drove the conversation about what needs to change in that watch, and that's just as much a contribution as anything else. So we have an A here, and that just means, uh, or else. Oh, in this case, we don't really care what's going on. 
we're just going to return. What are we going to return? Uh, we're just going to return whatever this is. Right? No, this is. Oh, we're just going to return this thing again. This is pure. This is an option of A. I'm going with this thing. And we're just going to lift that up to F so that we get a nice F of option of A. And in the non case, what we're going to do is we will have to evaluate this thing. So we'll just do y dot value dot value. I made some PRs, but mostly chat and whatnot. Maybe some state. Oh, yeah, the state management stuff. Oh, yeah. Wait, uh, coming up in the future. I feel like we've worked on that maybe like a year or two ago. Um, but glad to hear it's still coming up. I haven't. I haven't been able to take a deep look on what's going on with Outwatch recently, but it was my 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 first real open source uh, contribution, so I still value it dearly. Um, and thank you for saying Lib is fantastic. I cannot take a lot of credit for how it works nowadays. Uh, that's mostly on Felix and um, shit. What's his name? Johannes, Felix and Johannes, yeah, great guys. I met at uh, Scala Up North two years ago, three years ago, yeah, 2017 in Vancouver. Um, that was a great conference. Vancouver is a great city. I want to go back there someday. But I'm getting off traffic. Traffic. I'm getting off topic. <laughs> um, I need to wrap this in develop now, and also in option two. And that will give us back the laziness that is not apparent in this. Although I wonder, I could probably just, or else F. Yeah. So this is basically, this is basically the same thing, right? This is exactly what we're kind of doing. Oh, no, no, here. Oh, I need I went to switch the files when I did not mean to do that. Um, but yeah, this is the exact same implementation we have here, which kind of validates what I'm thinking is correct. Um, all right. Oh, my computer is slow. I thought it was going better than last time in terms of performance, but... All right, so... I think with this, let's just start writing tests for this. Let's see if I can get to it. Um, I wonder where I would put those tests. I guess probably in there, like I guess in like Clisley, Clisley Suite, and Writer T Suite and stuff. Maybe they are existing tests for this. Let's see. Double swap, reset consistency, value, value. So I'm looking for an app to eval, personally. But it's not here. I'm looking for lazy, lazy. Nope. OK. That's fine. That means we just get to write more tests. Um, I wonder how we best do this. Because it's not, it's not easy to write tests for evaluation. If you remember the last time, if you were there, um, basically, uh, we had we invented a whole new function. We didn't invent it, but it, we created a new function that tracked how many times it was invoked, um, just so we could see that the short circuiting was actually happening. Um. But this is tough with Rider, but I feel like it's probably easy to do with Clisley. So let's just start there. 
listed alphabetically and I should be able to. <laughs> right. Um so what we want to do here is basically just add a test that checks that map to eval is um lazy. And what we'll do is basically because we made options map to eval. Oh uh, no, we didn't make options map to eval. We made options combine k eval lazy last time. Um, but option is also lazy in map to eval, so we can use that. So. Let's just go val l is a Kleisley going from some integer. I guess this doesn't really matter. Um, to, and this is where the interesting part comes in. Let's just use curly braces here. I'm just going to invoke a side effect here to. Um, to make sure, so we'll just use like count, I guess count equals zero. And what we'll do here is we'll invoke some side effect count plus plus. Wow, I haven't written the plus plus in a long time. <laughs> and then we will return a. Um, so if we want this to short circuit in map two, basically we'll have to return none here. Or else just go with option at empty, because then we can specify the type. Just make it a string. And then the right hand side doesn't even matter. Oh, it does matter. Actually, what we can do here is just reuse that. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so and now what we want to do is we want to Take the semi group K. Um, actually, let's just do we have, yeah, L dot map to eval. Oh, there's no, is that not a thing? That should work. Oh, we don't have cut implicit and scope. So let's just do that. Uh, have that. I'm not a fan of these syntax imports. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna. But no, I'm just gonna do implicit. Fuck it. Ooh, I said fuck again. Count plus equals one. Is plus plus not syntax in Scala? I'm actually not sure. Now that I think about it. Do I need to write out count plus equals one? Oh man, I haven't. I haven't like. <laughs> done things like this in so long that I'm just I, I honestly don't know if I need it or not alright let's see oh, uh, scrolling is so delayed nope nope as in it doesn't exist I guess we'll find out um, it's fascinating but plus plus has been around for so long. Expected to find it in every language, but I actually like I'm I'm cool if it doesn't have it. Oh, what you thought? Wait, you saw it? I did plus equals. No, I don't think I did. No. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we should now be able to do is call map to eval. Yeah, there we go. And then just say eval it now. It doesn't matter. If we want to evaluate, um, so basically adding it to itself, kind of. Um, yeah, it doesn't exist. Damn, that's interesting. I mean, I I like it because it encourages mutability, and I don't like mutability. But yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Um, so basically, what we're doing here is we're just 
mm, we're basically just combining it to itself. Um, and if this were not lazy, if I just use map two here without the eval, this count, this would would be invoked twice and the count would be two. Um, and that basically, and well, I kind of need to know what kind of test style, okay, should be, that's what I need to. So after this count should be one, right? Because since we return none here, uh, that basically means we can stop the whole computation and it won't invoke L again and therefore it won't uh, add one to the counter again. So this, in my opinion, should, um, should be fine. And I am going to test this. Test only. Do we need to do dot scholar? Wow, how do I not know this? Um, I think this is fine. All right. Now it's going to take a real long time for this to work. And in the mean, no, no, I did something wrong. Um, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense, though. I forgot to unwrap this because f expects an f of something and option t is not that so let's just try that again and now we'll want combine k eval which will also be lazy i am on the vpn i'm going to disconnect from that stream will probably go dark for a bit, but yeah. Um, let's go to close Skype. Anything to get better. Yeah. Oh well. Um, so, here we kind of want to do the exact opposite. Which is not, like, not the exact opposite but it's some form of opposite so you want to do the same thing with the count just to get a sense for the um, the side effects that are going on here and we'll want to um, yeah basically we're doing the same thing except we'll return some here Do this again. Doesn't matter. Can't type. Uh, count plus equals one, and then we'll just return sum of um, n two string or something. Doesn't really matter. And now, if we do l dot combine k eval with the evaluated version of itself, the count should be 1. And it has to compile 111 Scala sources. Which is a bit, oh, there you go. That's good. Oh, it has to do the laws. Ah, uh, because it has to recheck the laws, which is Annoying. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. Damn. It has to compile all the files in tests, even though we only want to run the run. Run the one. Some of my my I think my English is pretty good, but sometimes I get tripped up with the er, the er sound. One, run, one. It's just like English is a weird language. Um, yeah, now I'm just rambling. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I hope nobody's tuning in right now and being like, what the hell is this guy saying? Okay. Um, yeah. This is something we can't really do for Rider T for Option T because we don't have this suspension here, right? So Clisely, this works because it is it wraps a function and you know functions are I want to call them lazy but they kind of help with the laziness because you know they uh, they only they will only produce something if you give it their input um, so that kind of makes them lazy in a way even though it's it's not really lazy it's just I guess it's called by need right Nah, whatever. Um, so, um, while we wait for this to finish, so maybe someone on the in the comments can give me an idea. Like, is this even would a test like this even be possible for something like Rider T or Option T? Because I don't, I can't. Think of a way to do this at least right now but maybe I'm just not thinking hard enough <laughs> um, but yeah interested to hear if anyone has a cool idea or not um, all right in the meantime let's just you can look at some of the cats issues maybe there's something interesting I know there's some like here, something, uh, the cat's retry stuff. Was, I wanted to do something there. Also kind of wanted to work on um, this project called Cat Saga, which I thought was really cool. Why the hell is this? Oh. Um, but yeah, oh, actually, Cat's MTL is also something I really want to work on. We're kind of in the middle of rewriting the whole thing. Um, Cats MTL came to be, I think, also about like three years ago, and it had this mechanism for lifting monad transformer effects through a stack, which I don't think, it's not that most people didn't understand it, I don't, it's just that even the people that have worked with it were kind of baffled by it, like I kind of understood it, but it was also, I read a bunch of Haskell documentation to understand it. And even then trying to wrap my head around like some of the implementation um, was quite, quite a thing. Like I remember implementing uh, this thing called Monad, right, what was it called? Monad layer, Monad layer control for Monad Chronicle, which probably won't like if this doesn't, if this is something you've never heard, that's totally fine. Um, but basically, it was the it was the craziest type Tetris I've ever had to play, and while it was kind of like it was, it didn't feel like programming, and it felt more like a like a brain puzzle. You're like, oh, you have to fit this here, which is also fun in a way. But it's like, if this is your interface for um, I don't want to shit on the library at all. I think it it kind of made sense, um, but also if that is the entry point to, or not the entry point, but if this is part of the API of your library, um, simplify it, right? And that's exactly what me and Daniel have done in the past, I don't know, month or two, maybe three. Uh, hard to keep track of time these days but yeah so we have a bunch of stuff here this is actually interesting because this kind of goes in goes into the same thing we did right so in Haskell this thing here is combine K um, and Haskell is a lazy language so this combine K or I don't know what, what you call it um, is always lazy, right? 
and that allows you to do things like list of where this these kind of things would very easily stack overflow or not even terminate apparently is what Oscar is saying here um, but yeah I'm not gonna do this on stream before I talk to Oscar or at least discuss it a bit type tetris is a nice term right yeah it's it's not my invention I wish it was um, <laughs> I think I heard it first from Fabio Labella but I'm not, I'm not sure about that either uh, we could do a bunch of these help wanted because they're easy and but I also feel like we should leave those to um, to to newer contributors um, so that they can get their hands dirty and explore the cat's um, code base semi group for non-empty map is kind of weird oh yeah that was me this is my fault I'm sorry about that let's see if this is oh no combined key though is not Oh, yeah. Because it was inferred as Clisley of some. It should be Clisley of option. Hopefully, this will run a bit faster. Nope, it has to do the 104 Sky sources again. Alright, cool. But that gives us a little bit more time to think about what to work on next. I think I want to look at Cat's MTO. So I'm kind of excited about, you know the rewrite and the, the new things and the simple because cats M MTL is a cool idea um, it kind of gives you capabilities as like type classes I want to do open source company you mentioned that you could help getting started with cats how do I get in touch with you uh, yeah um, are you on Twitter or Gitter uh, what else I guess you could send me an email um, but yeah uh, if you're on Twitter or Gitter, you can just ping me and I will be happy to answer your questions and get you started. Um, it can be a little bit daunting at first. It definitely was for me. But once you kind of, like, I think the first two or three PRs I made, I kind of like, I don't want to say I had no idea what I was doing. Cause that's not obviously not completely true but I, I was very much like you know like looking at other parts of the code base which I still do now um git git you have git um if github had a messaging feature that uh that would help in this case but um you can also send me an email at luca dot jacobowitz at gmail.com and yeah I'm, I guess I'm just giving my email out to the internet but that's fine um sorry gitter oh you have gitter cool yeah J yeah just contact me however you like if and if you don't if for some reason you can't get a hold of me you can also um I guess comment once this stream is over this should re this should just convert to a normal YouTube video and um, you can kind of just put a comment under there and then I guess we can talk there or ex I don't know YouTube does YouTube have a messaging system probably right I feel like it would have but yeah okay so we could write a ton of documentation we could create inductive instances over Conti. This is, Daniel says this is a low hanging fruit. I'm not sure it is. Um, am I on the type level discord? Um, is that still active? I wasn't sure. Like I haven't checked the discord in so long because I assumed it wasn't active. But if it is, I should probably have a look there again. And yeah. Um, I can be around there. So, Conti is a bit is a bit of a weird type class. Uh, type class, Monad transformer. 
Um, but yeah, if, if Daniel thinks he's throwing any food, I'm not going to oppose him there. But I want to kind of get this one going, because this is, this is an interesting one. Um, and so basically, things like applicative ask, which we recently named, uh, renamed to ask, um, is something that is contravariant by nature, right? So, um, basically, it's not saying any more than, um, than uh, I, I will, I have some kind of, um, I have some kind of environment that I can access. And uh, when you're accessing something, like in a function, like as a function input, that is um, fundamentally contravariant. And so we should be able to implement something like this fairly straightforwardly, um, while also doing the same for for functor arrays or in fun uh, applicative handle and all these type classes that are in CATSMTL. Um, compiles now. Ah, that was great timing. Keep running. Um, yeah, once this is done, I'm going to switch to CATSMTO. And then we can do that. Unless anyone has something that they really want me working on. And I'd be glad to do that too. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Zero was not equal to one. Oh, because this whole thing returns an eval. That means we have to actually call dot value. Because it's too lazy, which is a good thing to be. But that, yeah. Let's see. I'm doing this again. How long will this take? Okay, it has to only compile the one source, which is good. Which also makes sense. So it should be a bit quicker. Um, yeah. Let's have... I'm just going to open the window. You know that might degrade performance more. Let's see. will open cats and TL there are so many things open source things that I would like to work on but yeah finding the right priority it's also this library called endpoints which I think is really awesome Maybe we can get away without doing it. Um, this is deleted, which is good. Um, okay. I'm going to just go into core main Scala ask. Let's just check with, um, still failed, interesting. So what is going on here? Oh, I made everything slower. Zero was not equal to one.
That's fascinating. How does that make sense? So this is not being called at all? Hmm. Um. Hmm. Anyone see the issue here? Like, let's look at this. Let's think about this. Let's go back to Kleisler. Oh, it's seven, which is nice. People still respect the healthcare workers. I would go out there and make noise too. But, I'm trying to run a stream. So let's think about this. I have a Kleisley, and I'm definitely going to run it right here. So this run method should definitely be called, and therefore, maybe this is like a currency issue or something. Shit, I haven't considered that. But even then, like, this should be, no, why would this, hmm. oh, this whole thing, okay, I'm dumb, sorry about that, this whole thing actually needs to be run, so let's just run it, with it so. yeah, sometimes, you know, it is very obviously, it is very obvious, and the answer is just staring at you in the face, and, yeah. Right, so, <laughs> now this should work. If this now returns count equals two, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do anything special, but it would be frustrating. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm gonna go back to, okay. Actually, wait for it. There we go. Perfect. Yay. Thanks, everyone. Um, all right. Let's gonna exit out of this. Just to hope that SPT doesn't slow my down, slow down my computer, and I'm gonna go back to Cat's MTO. And so here we have all of our instances. What I'd like to do is basically say, if we have a um, if we have an an ask and scope. Right? Oh, I should just um, covariant ask. Place it. Nice. Okay. Oh, and I need to add those right here. The F type and the environment type. So, does any of you ha not? know anything about uh cats mtl is cats mtl something that is that you've never heard of or maybe it's something or maybe you just don't know what ask is but if any of these like if, if you're looking at this and be like oh wow what the hell is ask uh why why do you want it to be covariant contravariant um no oh, it did let's go now. um yeah please just type in the comment i'd be happy to Give like a nice little explanation. So let's do E2. And we want that to be a uh, is it a super type? E2, which is a super type of E. Right, is that correct? Yeah. I always get confused, but yeah. Um then we want to be able to say we have an ask of F E2. And then just kind of write the little page. Ask. 
to um where is that? Oh I just <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Um I just saw the browser flashing on my <laughs> on my phone where I have the live stream on um and the comments. So that kind of um caught me off guard. Alright, so we want this for ask and we want it for a bunch of other stuff as well. So let's do the same thing for raise. This is basically right, this is basically just a way to say, hey, I can uh I can um I can raise some kind of error type, like an exception. Uh but it could also be anything else, like an ADT or something. Um and uh but basically if I know how to raise something of type throwable I also know how to raise subtypes of it, right? And that's what we're gonna do. Um, just saying implicit def covariant raise. And we'll have some E2, which is a subtype of E. And and this is raise and scope. Then we will also be able to raise um, things of type E2. Raise. Oh, I'm getting a emergency alert. Citywide curfew in effect at 8 p.m. God, that's so fucked up, sorry, but yeah, kind of is, uh, yeah, so I'm not going to be streaming outside after 8, you can hear the helicopters too, yeah. alright, um, so, what we need to do here is basically just implement the functor, which stays the same, Raise dot functor. Oh, we shouldn't call this raise. Let's just call this f. f dot functor. Because inside here we'll also have to implement raise, and that would be awkward. Um, and since e two is just a subtype of e, I wonder if I could just do this. We'll just do it automatically. I need to do some fancy whatever. Um, where are you at? I'm in New York City, um, which might explain my comments earlier. But yeah, in the East Village, to be more precise. Um, all right, so project for JVM compile. All right. We're gonna have this. Uh, it's obviously not gonna compile. Is this thing? But yeah, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick, and then I'll be right back.
All right, we're back. Um, got some questions in the meantime. How old am I? I am 25 years old. Um, although I'm going to be 26 in less than two months. July 22nd, it's my birthday. Um, stay safe, yeah. I will, I will do my best to stay safe. Um, yeah. Have been going to protests, but I have not gone out after curfew. All right, so obviously this thing does not work, but we wanted to. So we need to. Oh, and again, we have this problem here. Right, this should just be F. This is just F out applicative. Applicative stays the same, but we want to say ask um, and this is interesting oh no this is actually this should be easy right because we can just do widen yeah so um, for those that don't know um, cats has two functions called widen and narrow um, and they basically, so if we look at functor, let's have a look at functor, if you can, uh, you can have a look at applicative though, which I guess can get us two functor like this, haha, <laughs> shortcuts. <laughs> All right, so um, if we look at widen, which is, where is widen? Widen. Here, basically, it says that um, we can um, we can turn if we have an f of a, and we have some kind of b that is a supertype of a for any functor or any covariant functor. Cat sub functor is a covariant functor. Um, we can turn that f of a into an f of b. And this cast is safe because of this. Um, there is some kind of note here. This can result in a class cast because of uh, right. But yeah, basically what this is saying is that if we have an A and B is a super type of uh, A, then we can also always turn A's into B's. Um, Right, just it's an upcast, and uh, Scala does that for us automatically. So if we were to do something like this, we have an A here. We could do something like A or a type description as B, and because A is a subtype of B, that just works. Um, obviously, you can't change the source code code of a dependency here. And this is just a uh, basically just a. Um, a uh, an optimization right so if you think of this as list right so if you have a list of subtype a and you want to you want it to be a list of type b you wouldn't want to call map and like iterate over the whole list just to basically give it a new type um, so this is why it's implemented that way and yeah this will allow us to um, We'll just use applicative, which extends functor. Widen our uh, f dot ask. I think that should be that should be basically it. Um, and then we can start doing it for the other type classes. Cool. Uh, and so what this allows us is, for example. If we had um, some kind of error type, right? So let's say we have like some kind of seal trait error, and we have like some kind of case class foo error, which I don't know takes a string or something, and uh, we have some kind of implicit f raise f of e 
um, f of r, right, f of this thing, um, then that means we would have to basically say, oh, this thing is an error every single time. Um, but with this thing, it will automatically infer correctly that uh, because it is a subtype, we can still call it the in in these situations. Just, I wonder, like, because this was just. I wonder if this is needed. I feel like it is, and I feel like I've I've been in a place where I've had to explicitly do these kinds of things. I don't remember exactly when it was. Eh, oh well. Um, yeah. So we have this for raise and ask. Uh, we can do it for something like handle. So handle extends raise, and it basically says that uh, you can't just raise errors, but you can also handle them by taking that E and turning it into a new F of A. Alright. Um, That. Cool variant handle. This is not the most interesting um, new contribution to um, to cats and tail maybe, but uh, of course I need to, I need to it's a subtype of E. Um, but. A lot of the times, you know, open source work is just like any other work where it is not the most interesting thing. Um, and that's totally okay. It doesn't need to always be the most interesting thing. Sometimes that's just not what the project needs. So, um, do we do no, let's just implement this like this. Alright, applicative is just f dot applicative, it's the same thing. We need to do handle with. Now this is a bit interesting. Because here E2 is in Ooh, I wonder if this works. You'll have to find out. Because if you look at rays. Here, this is in contravariant position, but here, it, I think it's in covariant position. So I don't think this holds. And if you think about it, it shouldn't hold, right? Because, um, wait, why do I need to implement functor? Does this not override functor? Huh. This really should though. Yeah. So here we have E2 in contravariant position, and I believe this is covariant position because inside of the function it's in covariant position but because we take the function as its own covariant that basically flips the variance right um, well, maybe I'm wrong well I guess we'll have to find out so what's the problem now uh, oh, okay it's just lagging so let's see if we have f of handle. Oh, we need to wait. No, no, we are doing handle. Um, so you have f a here, which you can still do, and then it expects a function from. Yeah. So if I just do this, this won't work because it expects e two. I expect E and we give it E2. And yeah, I guess handle is not a covariant type class. And therefore, we can't really do this. 
unless no I don't see how we could possibly do this unless we did something like we could do something interesting so haha now it maybe doesn't maybe it's not as um, not as boring as I thought so basically we can say we can handle super types of e2 here of e here but we can't handle subtypes right so basically this is some error you you want to be able to say oh i can handle um right so you want to be called this for any e and if you say oh i can only handle an e2 which is a subtype then that's not going to be useful because what if you have an e that is not an e2 how are you supposed to call this function you can't um but if it's a super type that basically means we can call this for any um that should mean that yeah right because any e is always going to be an e2 I think that makes sense yeah uh, but that probably means we need to do we need to add this to all of these let's see what happens if I just compile this um, it just fails here again which makes sense e. oh whoa. but now I'd have to add like an e3 or something that would be very awkward. But does it matter? Yeah, it definitely matters. Well, let's see. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on here. I wonder if we can do this. Oh. No. Oh. Yeah. That doesn't work. Because we need an E. But E2 is a subtype of E, E3 is a super type of E, but that doesn't mean they're equivalent, which makes perfect sense. So this is not the solution to this problem. Just fine. Um, maybe there's something else I'm missing? But as of right now, I don't see how this can work. Uh, yeah, I'm just not, not going to do this right now. And we can go on and do the same thing for something like... Why is there an error here now? Oh, because I... Ah, okay, I'm just going to comment this out. Um, Yeah, <laughs> for anyone uh, watching and being like, wow, this guy has no idea what he's doing. It's exactly the point of the whole, <laughs> the whole exercise. Um, I uh, very, a lot of the open source work is very much exploratory. And um, sometimes you do something, you think about a problem and like, I mean, I guess it's just like any other work and, you know, um, yeah, I don't I don't have all the answers. I'm not a superhuman being. I'm just a a guy that happens to work on open source in my free time. Um, so yeah. So let's do the same thing for tell. And tell is basically like a way to have like a, an append only log um, as a type class. Uh, and it corresponds to the writer T monad transformer. So implicit def and tell looks to be very contravariant in the same way that raise was. Um, and so that means we can make it covariant here. Uh, right, covariant tell. 
Uh, and then one L2, which is a subtype L. And we'll have to get an implicit F of tau F of L. Tau F and L2. This new new tau F and L2. My typing is really bad right now. And it needs a functor, which we can again just pass. It needs tell. And here, I think we can just. Oh, I didn't match the things. Oh. We can just give it to this thing. So again, it begs the question do we actually need this? And like once I get started writing tests for this, maybe I should write the tests now. Just to be like, oh, hey, this works, and this is doing what I think it should be doing. Um, yeah. Yeah, why not? So, uh, so we need the... What is... Oh, yeah, this is not something that has anything right. So I guess what we could do is put these under syntax tests. Yeah, that's kind of kind of what we're going for. Oh, but it's not really syntax, is it? I guess it's kind of syntax. It's more like varia uh, variance enhancement kind of thing. Um Wow, this just turned red out of nowhere. Mm, because, oh, nope. It's good at nope. Oh, that's annoying. It needs to be. There needs to be some kind of. But why would this. Okay, now they're all. Yeah, they all have problems. So we need to do some kind of implicit prioritization. So I guess what we do here is uh, just have to go an even lower priority. Priority. Just add that there. I wonder if they if they do conflict though. Maybe maybe this, this just isn't thought out the way I thought it was. So let's see. I did this in rays. So this is still. Hmm. I wonder if this is because. Oh no, not this one. Maybe I should actually just try compiling it. Because it doesn't seem to. Alright. I'm going to just go to. Called try compiling tests. Yeah, I don't know if my editor here is just slow and catching up or. So it said eight before, and now it's six. Oh, wow, okay. Um. But yeah, it looks like these are fine, so it's just the uh, prioritization. So we, yeah, and this is also something probably not a lot of people have to do outside of library maintainers, like implicit prioritization. 
It's annoying, but it makes things a lot easier for other people. So, I am going to do the same thing for Toe. Where are these? Where did these come from? What's fascinating? Okay. This is for binary compatibility, but we also we also changed the name here, so this wouldn't be binary compatible anyway. Oh, I'm just gonna leave this for now. Um, low priority tell instances two. Too low, too furious. That was a bad joke. You know, sometimes you tell bad jokes and people laugh, but I guess if uh, <laughs> on a live stream there's no one to hear your joke, or there's no one to react to your joke. So. Um, so it's even worse. <laughs> you immediately realize, oh, this was a. Uh, not the greatest joke, because I have definitely told better jokes. No, this does. So, did I even do that? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, yeah, that should, should do it. Should do it. Uh, if I do this again, it should give us less errors, I hope. And then we did for raise. What do we change in here? Oh, yeah, we added the functor thing. Yeah, less errors is good. So now we're just doing the same thing here again. Two. Straight, send it here. Probably get rid of these. We'll create an issue at some point. Now, hopefully, this will all compile. I'm going to touch something else. Um, don't really remember. Okay, cool, it did compile. So I'm not going insane, which is good. Though if I were, I would be also understandable giving everything going on. <laughs> All right, so what I actually wanted to do, I guess, is write some tests for these things. Um. So yeah, let's think about how those would look. I guess if I have some kind of function foo and I want to say um, something like some kind of, I guess we need to make this explicit. Um, some kind of implicit ask of f and um, so I guess here we kind of need to do something like, uh, I guess we'll just use a still trade kind of thing. And say something like, um, and, and we'll just create a case class that That can um, do. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Let's just call it 
foo in it's bad, but yeah. And so this foo here, it only wants to it doesn't really care about what what else is in the end, but it does care. It does care about foo in because that's really what it needs. It doesn't really care about anything else. Um Right, I think that's true. And now we should be able to ask for a foo end. Um, but what we should also be able to do is call ask foo and end and then ask that as well. Yeah, that should compile, and that's all we kind of need because, like, we don't care about the implementation. That does compile. That's cool. That's awesome, right? I think that's pretty neat. Like, um, but I guess it's also about like embedding this this kind of thing into a larger program. So if we have some kind of bar f. And that says, oh, I really, um, I care about my whole environment and not just the foo env. So I'm just going to have an f of env. So I guess this is the real use case because this use case, like, even though it's nice, doesn't really make sense. Is it something we want? Um, and here I should be able to call foo. Right? And I can. I cannot. Uh, because it wants a foo end. Oh, and because this is a sealed tray. Wait. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because this is flipped. Um. Just because I have an environment doesn't mean I have a foo environment. It's actually the wrong way around, and I'm thinking about it. Oh yeah, this is more like um, this is something where right? like I'm thinking of this use case right here. So uh, we'll just rename all of this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here I want to raise this. Now it should work. Yeah. I'm just gonna raise some stupid error code four oh four or something. But this still doesn't work. Starting with raise for monet partial over your shit. Diverging implicit expansion, that's one of the most annoying errors you can have. But how do we fix that? So maybe the implicit prioritization, maybe the monad partial order is actually less general. Maybe we just need to switch these. Does that make sense? Comment if that makes sense or not. Well, what am I doing? I don't want to do that at all. Uh, nope, same thing. So, is this the fault of this thing? Or... It's just something else. If I make this not implicit, does that work? It does, but it, then a lot of other stuff doesn't work. No, it still doesn't work. Oh, because obviously, wow, okay. I'm in the complete wrong <laughs> type class. 
because I'm an ask and I'm talking about rays here. Um, so yeah. Hmm. So why does the implicit expansion diverge here? Does that make sense to anyone? Uh, syntax, that's where I wanted to go. Because it seems to me we have a raise of f and error, and foo error is a subtype of that. So if you look at this, if this, if you replace this with error and this with foo error, and foo error is a subtype, should work out just fine. For some reason it diverges. That's odd. Don't expect that to happen. Does it just not know what to like? Oh, you know what? Yeah, because f no, because this is this returns nothing. So this should also return nothing, and that should be fine. It shouldn't complain about nothing. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to try and see if this thing is a fault. Maybe it is. Maybe it is not. It is not. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, I can't picture why this doesn't work. Because um, you quite, quite clearly have an f of raise, f of the. I wonder if it's trying to find this, and then um, like implicitly, uh, kind of like calling itself again so we get this thing which is also implicit and then just goes back right into this thing and just like is that what diverging implicit expansion is i don't even know what it is exactly i've seen it so many times and usually you can fix it by just adding a type type uh type description or a type, what are they called? Well, yeah, I feel like I've been coding for too long. Uh, <laughs> maybe I should stop the stream here. Um, but maybe we can try something else entirely. Do something. No, hmm. Yeah, I just not sure what's going on. Because this works fine. Right? Or maybe that yeah, that works fine, okay. So that would be the same as that. Um hmm. Yeah. Can't quite figure this out yet. But um I think I'm gonna end the stream anyway, even though this is not the way I maybe wanted to end the stream. 
But I hope you all still got something out of it, even if it might not have been a lot or the thing you thought you'd get out of it. Um, but yeah, let me know here or like in the comments or on Twitter um, if you want to see this again. Uh, and if so, maybe what kind of OSS work you'd like to see. And um, yeah, thanks a lot for tuning in. I see 15 people online right now. Good night. Uh, what's what's the time in Germany? It must be like almost 2 a.m. Yeah, you should go to bed. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks again. And I will see you all very soon um, when I'll be streaming again, which I don't know exactly when it is, but probably next week sometime. Um, this is fun for me, kind of. Um, if I don't get stuck. <laughs> no, but it was still fun. Um, yeah. See you all. Thanks for tuning in. And have a great quarantine.